money, motherfucker. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Thank you, thank you. This is Groucho Marx. Well, here I am, stepping in over my head again. With Fibber McGee and Molly. Folks, this is just as new to me as it is to you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Well, what an original greeting. Hello and welcome to another week of comedy, funny, ha-ha, on Dwayne Old Time Radio. One thing, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy what I'm doing, subscribing is 100% free. Also, one more thing, if you have a few seconds or one minute, please leave a review on your preferred podcast service, especially if you're on Apple, Spotify, or really just your preferred podcast service. Thank you, and hope you enjoy. This week we return with Lum and Abner, two episodes from Lum and Abner. The first episode is Sell Oil Well to Mr. Carter, and that episode aired January 4th, 1935. Then a few days later, they re- they aired squirrel sh- <laughs> this one is kind of hard to say so a bit of a tongue twister S- squire skimp president of sw oil say that five times fast we'll say it one more time squire skimp president of sw oil in that episode aired january 7th sorry january 7th 1935 Everybody, here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, when you go downtown shopping or when motoring or hunting, take a flask of Horlicks malted milk tablets along with you. There's nothing like them for helping ward off fatigue or hunger. When you begin to feel tired or feel hungry, just dissolve a few of these delicious tablets in your mouth. They'll nourish you while you work, keep you going at top speed when you aren't able to eat on time. Children love Horlick's malted milk tablets. They can easily carry a supply to school with them. You can get Horlick's malted milk tablets, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor, either in the small, conveniently carried 10-cent size flask or in larger sizes. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, yesterday... A Mr. Carter, representing the Southwest Oil Company, arrived in Pine Ridge to negotiate for the oil well that Lum and Abner recently drilled. He seemed very much interested in buying their holdings. And as we left them last night, Mr. Carter and Lum were in conference over the matter. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Lum and Abner down at their newly completed office. Evidently, an agreement has been reached, but the deal hasn't been closed. Listen. Now, what is it that he's going to give us besides that uh, $3,000 loan? A uh, royalty. You, you mean he's going to make a king out of you? No, royalty in the oil business, Abner, means that we'll get so much on every barrel of oil they get off of that land over there. Uh-huh. We get $3,000 cash money and 10 cents on every barrel it's sold. Yeah, well, out of heat, brother, Lom, we just sold a whole shebang for cash to start with and get out of oil business. Well, we'll be out of it. We won't have a thing to do with it. We won't have no say-so or nothing. All we've got to do is sit back and get a check from them every month or whatever coming to us without even turning a hand. Well, now, how much are we going to get every month, though? Well, that depends on how much oil they get. Yeah. They're going to clean the well we dug out good and put casings and stuff. Put what in it? Casings. Uh, you mean automobile casing? No, car? No, no. I don't know what it is, but that's what he said. I know it ain't automobile casing, though. Yeah. Says he believes it'll run two or three thousand barrels a day, then. 
Well, how much will that come to for us? Well, if it runs 2,000 barrels a day, and he says it'll do that easy, that'll be uh, $200 a day we'll make out of it. $200 a day? That's what he says. And on top of that, they're going to drill some more wells over there. They're just going to drill all over that five acres. We'll get 10 cents on every barrel that's pumped out of there regardless. Doggy, that does sound pretty good, don't it? It sounded awful good to me. <laughs> if they drill five more wells over there, say, and they're as big as that and we got over there now, yeah. that'll be uh, $1,200 a day we'll get out of it. $1,200? $400 a piece for me and you and Grandpa. I done figure that up. For the land, say. And we don't even have to be here. We can go off and vacate ourselves, go anywhere. Yeah. Just let them know where to send a check to, and here it'll come every month. <laughs> That's what I call making your brain work for you. Yeah, well, now, that's sounding better, all right. Yeah. When you said that all the cash we got out of it was $3,000, well, <laughs> I thought you'd let him give you a skinny. <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah. Well, don't you ever worry about nobody giving me a skinny. I bet old Grandpapa be tickled. <laughs> he didn't much want to sign that green man chest to give you full authority to sell a company. <laughs> no, I can tell that. No, no, he didn't. But that feller Carter said that's the only way he'd do business. Yeah. He told me he's just working for the Southwest Oil Company. He don't own none of it. He don't, huh? No. He's just representing the president. That's what I ought to get, you know, somebody to represent. Oh, that's right, I ain't president or nothing now. No. <laughs> I'm a retard capital. Well, I don't know what I am, but I'm through working, I know that. I've hit my last tap. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't aim to ever turn another hand as long as I live. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you see that piece of paper there on the floor, Evan? Yeah. I wouldn't even put myself to the bother of bending over and picking that thing up for $10. <laughs> That's just how deep in it I am. <laughs> I wouldn't pick it up for a hundred dollars. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, just a scrap of paper somewhere. Uh, no. No, oh, that's that paper I was figuring out how, how much money we're going to make on. Yeah, I'll right. show that to you. Here, here. I just want to show you. If they drill a hundred wells over there, I've got it up to a thousand, but if they drill a hundred wells over there and get two thousand barrels out of every one of them, that's two hundred thousand barrels. And we get ten cents a barrel. For the land, thing. And that cup... No, I never finished that. Oh, that's too much bother anyhow. Have a cigar, Emma. <laughs> we can smoke these things all we want to. <laughs> yeah, hello. We can take life easy now, huh? Just sit around and eat and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Doggy, that reminds me, too. I'm going to hire somebody to do the cooking over at the place while Elizabeth is gone. I'm just about half starved myself to death here lately. <laughs> Trying to cook my own grub and, and eat it. <laughs> I ain't going to hire no crook. I'm going to start eating down the hotel. At the hotel? Yeah. Don't get I'm just a good mind to do that with you, Long. All right, now we might start eating over at Sister Simpson's. I believe she sets a better board. Yeah, it's a good idea. I never thought about that. Evelina eats there, too. <laughs> yeah, well, now, that will be nice for you. Just... Sit there and eat and spark Evelina. <laughs> yeah, why didn't I think about that before? Yeah. And did I believe I'll just call Sister Simpson up and tell her we'll be over there for supper? Yeah, that's the time. Just telephone her up. Tell her to have some fried chicken, hot biscuits, black-eyed peas, gravy, Never mashed mind. potatoes. Oh, Sister Simpson. I'm hungry. Hello? <laughs> I could eat all Sister Simpson? Uh, this is Lum Eddard. Yes, Mom. Uh, what are you going to have for supper tonight? As to what kind of pie she's going to have, Mom, I do love Well, pie. it is some of my business. I ain't getting inquisitive. I, me and Abner are sort of thinking about coming over and eating with you tonight. Yeah, think about it. I'm coming. I'll be there. Yes, Mom. Sure, the we aim to pay for it. <laughs> Spare ribs and backbone and fish, huh? Fish. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, me and Abner is coming over there to eat tonight, then. Yeah. Yes, Mom. Tell her to have and, lots of it. And, Sister Simpson, I just wonder if you couldn't sort of put me and Abner and Evelina over to the table by ourselves. <laughs> Listen, I tell you, I want to get close to Evelina. Yes, Mom, one of them big tables if you still got some of them. <laughs> Stack it high. Put sideboards on it. All right. Yes, Mom, I know. Six o'clock. Yes, Mom. All right. Goodbye. And you never asked her what she charges, Mom. I don't care what she charges. I'll get my money's worth. <laughs> Hungry as I am now. <laughs> we don't have to worry about expenses now, no way. Oh, no, no. I don't care if she charges 50 cents. I feel like celebrating. Yeah. I might take Evelina into the county seat to a picture show tonight, too. Yeah, I'll go with you. Wait till she hears about this deal. I'm uh, somebody at the door, Mom. Yeah. yeah, I won't like 
me Mr. Carter's back with him. Yeah, yeah. Come in, come in. Well, howdy, Dick. Come in, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> I just run over and see if you'd made a deal with that fellow on your oil well yet. Well, we made a deal, Dick, but we ain't closed it yet. Oh, well, I made a deal with him to where none of us will ever have to do another day's work. Yeah, it sure did. I got us $3,000 in cash and a royalty of 10 cents a barrel on all the oil they get out of the ground over there. And they're going to drill 100 more wells. Well, we don't know just how many they're going to drill at. How does that sound, Dick? Well, all right, Lum. I don't know what made a good deal. Of course, it'll depend on how much oil you get out of that well. Yeah. Well, he says he believes when they get the well cleaned out good, it'll run at least 2,000 barrels a day. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. There must be a lot of it there. You wouldn't have struck it that close to the top of the ground. Well, that's no. what I figured. Yes, sir, don't know what you made a good deal, Lum. Uh, what's holding it up? You said you hadn't closed it yet. Oh, I've got the deed all made out to them, laying right here, but I want them to sign a paper relieving us of any responsibilities in the company. Yeah. Sort of like that when Squire Skimp made a sign when he, we bought that land off of him a while back. Yeah, uh-huh. Fact is, I copied it right off of that and Squire got us to sign. You've seen it. We agree to assume all the debts and obligations here to fore and here and after made by the Pine Ridge Oil Company and stuff like that. Uh, you mean uh, that they're going to pay for all those barrels and the drilling of the well and all that? No, thing? no, we'll have to pay for that. But uh, if anything comes up later that we don't know about now, they can't hold us responsibility. To yeah, well, that's, that's a good idea, Lum. That's good business. Uh, when's he going to know about it? Well, he said he'd uh, have to get authority before he could make a deal like that. I reckon he had to telephone the Southwest Oil Company about it. Yeah, I see well, you fellas are mighty lucky, and I'm glad for you, too. Well, thank you, Dick. I just wish you'd have been in with us on it. Love to see you get rich, too. <laughs> well, I'm sorry now I didn't go in with you when you fellas gave me a chance, Mom, but I can't blame anybody but myself. But now if this boom keeps on, well, I'm making pretty good money down there at my store well, now. that's good. Hey, yeah, we'll do our trading down there from here out, Dick. Won't argue about the price, neither. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Somebody at the door. Come in. Well, back already. Yeah, come in, Mr. Carter. Yes, I think we're all ready to close the deal now, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Carter, shake hands with Dick Huddleston. How do you do, Mr. Huddleston? Glad to know you. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Carter. Well, you gentlemen won't talk business. I'll get on out of here. Then. No, that's all right, Dick. Deal's all made. Well, now. I've got to get back to the store anyway, Lum. I'll see you after a while. Then. All right, Dick. Yeah, here, sit down, Mr. Carter. Take yes, care. Thank you. You say uh, that was all right with them to sign the dream in? Yeah. Yes, no trouble at all. And uh, if you have the deed ready, I'm ready to turn the draft over to you now. Well, give it time, Lum. Yeah, here's the deed all made out. That's yours. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the royalty contract where we agree to pay you gentlemen 10 cents on every barrel of oil produced on that particular five acres. Yeah. And here's the draft for $3,000. That's what I want to say. Now, that uh, agreement relieving us of any responsibility. Yes, here it is, all signed by the president of our company. Signed? Now, Granny's, how'd you get it signed so quick? Yeah. Well, the president of our company lives right here in Pine Ridge. Why, I thought the Southwest Oil Company was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. No, no, I'm from Tulsa, but the company's here in Pine Ridge. Mr. M.K. Skimp is our president. Maybe you gentlemen know him. M.K. Skimp? Well, I'll be dead blamed. That's Squire Skimp. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? If Squire Skimp can't get a thing one way, he will another. And now, folks, let's pay a short visit to the Barker home. As we look in on the scene, we find Mrs. Barker at the telephone talking to her husband. Jim, I'm sorry to disturb you, dear, but I've got some great news for you. Your dad and mother are in town. Yes, they are. Came in unexpectedly this morning. Your dad's on his way up to the house now. He'll be here any minute. Isn't it grand? They may go back tonight, but they'll be here for dinner. There's the front doorbell. That's probably dad now. Hurry home tonight, won't you, dear? Goodbye. Oh, Dad. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Not half as glad as I am to see you. How are you? Just fine. Here, let me take your things. Oh, just leave them on the chair. Did I surprise you? You certainly did. What are you two doing up in this part of the country? Oh, well, I had to come up on business. Thought I'd drop in and pay you and Jim to visit. And I welcome. You bet you are. <laughs> this is a real treat. How that fine baby granddaughter of mine. Oh, just splendid. I was quite worried for a time, you know. A fool didn't seem to agree with her at all. But when I called in our family doctor, and he recommended Horlick's malted milk. And from the very first feeding, the baby started the game. And our problem was solved. You did just the right thing, my dear. Do you know we've always felt that it's Horlick's that saved your husband's life when he was a baby? He'd been losing weight steadily, and finally was so thin, we feared we were going to lose him. Then our doctor recommended that we try a weak solution of Horlick's malted milk. Say, we were happy beyond words when we found that little boy began to perk up at once. 
It wasn't long then until we had a normal, healthy baby again. No wonder that I feel you're giving your little girl a good start in following her daddy's example. And, folks, there are thousands of families who have had similar experiences with Horlicks malted milk. Horlicks is a wonderfully nourishing infant food. And the easy digestibility of Horlicks makes it a food that delicate and tiny stomachs can easily handle. For youngsters, too, Horlicks is a great food drink. It will help your children to develop sturdy, healthy bodies, sound bones, and good teeth. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health. We'll be with you all again Monday night at this same time. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Because it is so nourishing and energy-giving, and because it is so easy to digest, a glass of Horlicks malted milk is a fine noonday luncheon. Delicious and refreshing, Horlicks at noon will keep you alert later. It won't leave you feeling drowsy as a heavy meal so often does. And here's another thing about the Horlicks luncheon. It doesn't have the excess of calories that a heavy meal has. That's why it's such a fine weight control lunch for overweight people. You can make a glass full of Horlicks quickly and easily, either at home or at your work. Mixed with water alone, Horlicks is an easily digested, energy-giving drink. Use sufficient of the powder and mix well to bring out the delicious flavor and aroma. You needn't add any flavoring or any raw milk unless you desire it. Try the Horlick luncheon tomorrow noon. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, the Pine Ridge Oil Company is no more. Lum and Abner and Grandpappy Spears sold their holdings to the Southwest Oil Company for $3,000 cash and a royalty of 10 cents per barrel on all the oil produced on the property. Well, after the deal was completed, they found that they had been the victims of another of Squire Skimp's schemes, as the squire himself is the president of the Southwest Oil Company. And the Mr. Carter, with whom they were dealing, was only one of his henchmen. (laughs) Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, Squire Skimp has already taken full charge of the oil business. And so we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house explaining the transaction to their old friend, Dick Huddleston. Listen. No, I don't believe there's any way for you to make him trade back. You've already delivered the deed to him. Yeah, but we give him the deed before we found out Squire was the president of the company. Yeah, we thought the Southwest Oil Company was the outfit in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, that telegram we got saying for us not to sell our property till they represent got you, that was from Tulsa. Oh, yeah, yeah. this fellow Carter's had come down here and made the deal with us. Uh, he's from Tulsa. Yeah, right? it is. Squire just hired him to come out here and make the deal because he knows we wouldn't sell it to him. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about it, fellas. Doesn't make any difference who owns it. You got the $3,000 that he paid you in cash, and if you get your 10 cents a barrel of oil, they what? You'll make just as much out of it this way as you would if you'd sold it to anybody else. Yeah, if we get the royalty. Yeah. That's what I'm feared of with Squire Skimper handling it. I wouldn't trust that fella no further than I can throw the fine. Man, we'll just have to sit over there by the oil well, and every time they haul a barrel of oil off the place, just put it down on a little book. Yeah, we can keep up with it that way, all right. Well, the thing to do is just have an auditor go in there once a month. Yeah, I could do that. Huh? Have a who go in there once a month? An auditor. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Ain't you never rode on a train, Abner? You don't mean to say you're going to run a train in there once a month. Oh, Abner, our auditor. Only we ain't going to run him in there. 
Yeah, a fella goes in there and orders the books once a month, Abner. Yeah, a fella goes in there and orders the books once a month, Abner. Uh, yeah. Sees that they're keeping things right. Yeah, sees that they're keeping things right. Tells them they ought to do this and they ought to do that. An auditor. That's a good idea. I'm glad I thought of that. That's a heap better than having to sit over and count every barrel at the hall. I've been wondering how I could vacate myself and sit over there and count them barrels at the same time. Well, now, if you just want to lay around and rest, why, you could get yourself a hammock and just sort of lay over there and rest and count barrels, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I'd about get to counting them barrels and count myself right off to sleep. <laughs> like counting sheep. <laughs> yeah. It's quite that four or five hundred barrels slip by me for an order. Yeah. Well, of course, you could hire somebody to keep you awake. Well, oh, me, if I was going to hire somebody to keep me awake, might as well have them count the barrels. Yeah. Well, sure, that's the thing to do. <laughs> yeah, just let them count the barrels, and you can lay there in a the hammock and sleep all day. Vacate yourself. Yeah, it'd be a fine vacation. <laughs> it'd be a lot of fun. Lay out in a hammock all day by oil well right here in the dead of winter and try to sleep. Well, of course, everybody to their own notion. I know I wouldn't enjoy it, but... If you want to do it, well, it ain't no business of mine. But I'll tell you now, Lom, I'd be awful careful about who you get to count them barrels. First thing you know, he'll about count himself off to sleep, too. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Of course, you could hire somebody to keep him away, but you know, if you start that, it just ain't no stopping place. He'd have to get somebody to keep him away, and then he'd have well, to get somebody Abner, to keep him away. Abner, don't worry about it. Dick <laughs> just said we wouldn't have to count them ourselves. We'll get a... get a... What'd you call them things, Dick? Train. <laughs> auditor, Abner. Oh, well, I know there's train in there someplace. Abner, auditors, works on trains. You saw them going up and down the aisles. Got their names wrote right on them, up there on their cap. Oh, you mean the fella that runs the store there on the train? <laughs> Does what, Abner? Run the store, you know, sell soda pops and peanuts and apples and postcards and all that stuff. <laughs> News butchers <laughs> is what he means, Dick. <laughs> Boy, on, Abner. <laughs> Auditor tells the engineer what he ought to do and what he ought not to do. Tells him when to stop and stuff like that. Well, the uh, kind of an auditor I'm talking about, though, is an accountant, Lom. Expert accountant, bookkeeper. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, which? Which what? Which one of them are we going to get? I believe we better have the bookkeeper, Dick. That way I can help him. Well, it'll cost you a little something, but it'll be money well spent, especially with Squire Skimp in there. They drill some more wells over there, like you say. Well, you fellas have a nice income off that property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. me and Abner and Grandpap is dependent for the rest of our lives, you yeah, might say. Yeah, yeah. I'd have just drug her to been somebody else besides Squire Skimp we were going to have to deal with, that is, if I was having my druthers. Oh, well, if you keep a close watch on him, Lum, it'll turn out all right. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, what makes me so dead blame mad letting him put it over on us that way? Looks like every way we turn, we get mixed up with Squire Skimp in spite of all we can do. Yeah, I'm sure glad we made them sign that agreement saying they'd resume all the responsibilities of the company. <laughs> if he bankrupts the thing or something like that, I don't want him coming back to us for part of the money. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you had him sign that all right. Yeah, yonder comes Grandpap up out there now, Lon. I'm just coming through the gate. Yeah, yeah, well, we can go ahead with the meeting. Well, you fellas be wanting to talk business. I better get on back over there. Uh, don't, no, don't rush off, Dick. We ain't going to talk no secrets. No. I just thought we better have a meeting of the stockholders and figure out how much we owe and then divide the rest of the $3,000 up quick, Dick. Yeah, I'm anxious to get my part of that, too. And for Elizabeth and Pearl. They've been so hard pushed for cash, I just had to... Leave them down there in Texas, be a bit in that relay still. We could get some money out of this oil well. <laughs> Bet you're getting pretty lonesome for him too, aren't you, Abner? Oh, my, yes. i just been going around like a chicken with his head cut off. Well, uh, you fellas now are going to have a lot of time to loaf now. You sold your oil well and everything. Why, well, come down there in the store and see me. Come in, Grandpa. Yeah, hurry, man, hurry. Well, hello, Grandpa. Yeah, how are you, Richard? Well, all right, fine. Lum and Abner, just tell me about the deal he made. Yeah, yeah, pretty good trade Lum made, I think. Yeah, sure was. Well, I'll see you fellas later, then. Yeah. So long. Sit down, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scat, scat, get out of there. <laughs> yeah, let Grandpa have the chair there, Geraldine. You better get on back there and see them kittens of yours. They'll be getting lonesome for you. Now, jump down. There's a saucer of milk sitting under the safe back there in the kitchen <laughs> tree. I swan love you talk to that cat just like she was a human. <laughs> oh, she's smart as most humans. <laughs> Understands anything, I tell her. 
Well, we better get them eating started, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, let's get it over with, huh? Never seen no use to have them eating, no way. Why, of course not. Well, uh, meeting is called to order, then. Secretary, I'll read the minutes of the Now, last... long, let's don't get into all that stuff. Let's get the meeting over with. All right. Well, we got to have a treasury report. Uh, who is the treasury? That's right. Well, we got all the bills here. I can read them. Yeah, go ahead. How much do they come to, Ron? What do they all amount to? Then? Well, I ain't figured them up yet. Uh, Grand Pap, take that pencil paper there and set these figures down when I call them out. We got to add them up. All right. Let's have them now. Well, uh, first, I think we ought to stand and give a rising vote of thanks to the chairman of the board for making such an uncommonly good deal for us. Oh, Lom, we'll be here all night to start that kind of stuff. Let's get that money divided up. Well, Abner, we can't just jump right out in the middle of it. Well, I've never seen a feller as missionary over money as you are in my life. Money ain't everything, you know. Well, maybe not, but it comes mighty close to being, I'll say that. All right, I'll stand up and give a rising vote of thanks myself. The harp strings of memory strikes a tender chord as I stand here. Now, Lom, you don't set that up. Now, me and Grandpa both is going to get right up and walk right out of here right now. All right. You don't want things run the way they ought to be. We'll just illuminate that part of it. Well, let's get started. Here's the figures, Grandpa. You put them down. We stole day here over nothing. Lumber for building the office and the derrick on the oil well, uh, $373. And while I'm on my feet, I might mention that I happen to know that the chairman of the board talked Walter Bates down $5 on that bill. And dog the body'd never know it. It don't sound like it'd been cut down, none. Quit interrupting, Abner. Yeah, let Lum get done. Go ahead. Uh, Caleb Wee Hunt for drilling the well, uh, $50. Yeah, that's right. And he's worked every day since then. Fact is, he's worked night and day. Uh, his time runs to, uh, $96. Uh-huh. And Cedric's time mounts to uh, thirty-four dollars. Too much for Cedric. Now uh, here's a bill for uh, all the barrels that uh, we bought in there at the county seat. Yeah, let's put the oil in over. At, uh, hardware company, four hundred and fifty-six barrels at uh, three dollars and seventy cents apiece. Comes to sixteen hundred and eighty-seven dollars and twenty cents. For the land sake. Well, Abner, we had to have them. I don't care. It's too much money. Furniture for their new office, uh, two hundred and sixty-five dollars. That's all for you, too. I aim to take that back after we sold out, but Squire claims it went with the deal. Why, of course he would. Yeah, depend on him. Now, here's a bill from Dick Huddleston for $40. That's $40? For the, well, that's for that wire to fence off the ground over there, keep folks away from the well. Oh, oh, yeah, that's money well spent. And uh, here's a Caleb turned in a statement of the labor charges over there for the crew. And uh, he says they're getting impatient wanting their money, too. That's right. The whole thing mounts to $492.80. Yeah. That's all over it. Add that up, Grandpap. I think that covers everything. We can all three go into the bank tomorrow and cash this check and pay off these bills and then divide what's left up three ways quick. Yeah, that's the <laughs> thing to do. And then I can go right straight to the post office and send Elizabeth a money order and get her and Pearl back home. Well, yeah, man, that totals uh, $3,030. Three thousand? Huh? Wait a minute. Let me look at that. According to that, we owe $10 apiece. Undoubtedly, must be some mistake about that. <laughs> Well, so far, it looks like everybody in Pine Ridge has benefited by the discovery of that oil well, except the members of the Pine Ridge Oil Company. Mr. and Mrs. Baldwin have spent the evening visiting friends. They're on their way home now. Let's listen to them as they walk along talking. Did you have a nice time, Tom? Oh, fine. The Fishers are lots of fun, aren't they? You bet, Mrs. Fisher, especially. Oh, Bert's kind of a bore, always talking about himself. Uh-huh. Seems to me you were doing a bit of that yourself tonight. Who, me? <laughs> I didn't have a chance. Every time I started, Bert interrupted me. I think Bert's very interesting, much more so than Martha Fisher. Bert, interesting? <laughs> That's funny. Well, I had a nice time anyway. Well, I didn't say I didn't have a nice time. I just said that I get kind of tired listening to Bert. You know, Mrs. Fisher's certainly a real hostess. Wasn't that Horlicks delicious? The best malted milk I've ever tasted. You're not going to give Martha credit for that, are you? Well, why not? She mixed up that glass of Horlicks, didn't she? Horlicks is always delicious, no matter who mixes it. I could do every bit as well as Martha Fisher. Oh, so that's it, huh? You women certainly are a jealous lot. Nonsense. But I don't want to see Martha Fisher get credit for something that the makers of Horlicks are responsible for. Well, I'm willing to be convinced, but you'll have to prove it to me, though. I'll tell you what you do. Have a big glass of Horlicks waiting for me when I get home from the office tomorrow, and then I'll let you know if it's as good as that that we had at Fisher's tonight. And listen, get a big package of Horlicks, and we'll always have it on hand to serve to folks that we're entertaining. 
You know, everybody likes Horlicks, and that's a mighty fine late evening drink. Because it won't keep you awake later, as so many beverages do. And there's a mighty good point, folks. One reason why Horlicks is such a wonderful drink to serve in the evening. Far from keeping you awake later, Horlicks, before going to bed, relaxes and soothes. Helps you to fall asleep easily and quickly. And Horlicks is such a delicious, refreshing drink. As Tom Baldwin said, everybody loves Horlicks malted milk. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who bid you all good night and good health. for listening and I hope you enjoyed as always you can listen to my podcast on all podcast services you can also go to my website otr.doing.media to listen to all of my podcasts there is donation information patron information and more all on the website the website is slowly improving thank you for your patience Uh, it takes a while to update and add information to the website but it's getting there you can also find me on instagram duane.otr you can also email me if you want info at otr.duane.media Hope you enjoyed, and until next time, stay safe, wish you well, and as always, peace. Ha, ha, ha.